This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, how can I make a truche tile pattern in ZBrush? So to start off, I just have an example image here of a quarter circle truche pattern. And this pattern consists of a single tile that has quarter circles that are connecting at the midpoints of adjacent sides. And if you take this tile and then rotate it in 90 degrees, you can then repeat this across a grid and generate this really cool looking pattern. So with the tile here, if you rotate it in 90 degrees, it's always going to tile correctly. And you can come through and on your grid here, just by rotating the one single tile, it'll end up modifying the pattern. And this pattern is always going to tile. So it's a really cool tiling pattern here. So is there a way I can create something like this inside of ZBrush so then I can apply it to a model? So to start off, I'm just gonna hop over to ZBrush here and I just have a PolyMesh 3D object loaded in. Now to create this pattern, we first need to create our quarter circle parts. And so I'm gonna go to the tool palette over here and I wanna modify two primitives. So first I'm gonna click on the PolyMesh 3D star here to open up the quick pick menu here. And the first primitive I want to modify is the plane 3D. So I'm coming over here and grab a plane 3D object. I'll turn on my polyframes here. In the tool palette, I'm going to go down the initialize area here. I'm going to set my divide to say 10 by 10. And then I'm going to come up here and click make poly mesh 3D. So I've now created this grid here. Now the next primitive I want to create is a ring. So I'm going to go back over here to the tool palette, click on one of the tools here to open up that quick pick menu. I'm now gonna select the ring 3D primitive. With this primitive selected, you can see it's gonna come in at a different angle here. So I'm gonna go back to the tool palette, go down to the initialize tab for this primitive. I'm gonna change my alignment to Z to get it to match that grid that I had. And then I'm gonna change some of the divide options. So I'm gonna change my S divide to say 16, and then I'm gonna change my L divide to say 32. Now you wanna make sure that when you change this L divide, that you change it to a value that's going to give you a nice horizontal line through the ring here, and also a nice vertical line. So these two alignment points on my ring here are going to be needed when I come through and remove the portion that just creates that quarter circle. So now that I have my ring set up with the initialize tab here, I can turn this to a poly mesh object so I can sculpt and modify it. So click make poly mesh on that mesh there. And now I should have my plane 3D object and also my ring. So now with the plane 3D object, I'm gonna select that. And now I'm just going to append in that ring primitive. So I'm gonna go my subtool palette here. I'm gonna click the append option. In here, I wanna make sure I select the poly mesh 3D ring. So this is the one I modified. And if I click this, it should now append that part into my tool here. So I should have my plain 3D object here, that's the poly mesh, and then now I should have that ring subtool. And now I come to my subtool palette and select that ring. Now with this ring, I need to remove everything but a quarter of it to make a little slice that'll allow me to create that tiling pattern. So to do this, I'm just need to scale it up first, and then I'm just going to offset it, and then I'm remove the parts I don't need. So with the ring primitive here, I'm gonna to go to the geometry area, and then I'm gonna to go to the size area here. Currently, the size of this mesh is two in the XYZ. So I'm gonna bump this up to 2.5. So I'm gonna come over here and click on this, type in 2.5 and click enter, which is going to make this a little bit larger here. And now the next thing I wanna do is I wanna to go to the position area. So opening this up, and I wanna offset the position. So you can see I can offset in Y, I can offset in X, and I can offset in Z. So I wanna offset in X and Y. So I'm gonna offset in X by one, and I'm gonna offset in Y by one, and now I should have this. So I've taken that ring, I've changed the size to 2.5, so increased its value a little bit, and then I've offset its position. So now you'll notice that the center lines of a quarter of the circle here are now falling in the middle of the square. So now I just need to remove the parts that I don't need out of this ring. I'm gonna hold down Control and Shift, which is going to give me the Select Rectangle Brush, and then I'm going to click and drag, which is going to give me this drag box here. 
I can then press spacebar to move this around. And what I want to do is I want to engulf just a quarter of that circle. So the part that is fitting into that square there. And then I'm going to release, and this is now going to hide everything from that subtool that was not in that area. So now after I have this part hidden, I can now go to the modified topology area over here. I can now do a delete hidden, and that is now going to remove those parts there. And now I can go back up to my subtool palette. I can duplicate this one quarter circle because I need two of them. I can click duplicate, give me a second one of these. I can now switch to the Gizmo 3D. I'm going to unlock the Gizmo 3D and I'm going to click the home icon, which is going to center the Gizmo 3D to the world. And I also want to reset the orientation as well. And then I'm going to lock that again. And now if I rotate in screen space, and while I do this, if I hold shift, I'll be able to lock into an axis. I want to rotate to 180 degrees, and now I'll have that second, or the duplicated part of that quarter circle, now rotated into the correct position. So now I have something like this happening on my model. So now I can go back to the original quarter circle. I can now merge this quarter circle down into the one below it. So I make sure I have one of these selected. I'm going to go to the tool palette, subtool area, go to the merge area here, do a merge down and then click OK to the dialog there. It's now taken those two subtools and merged them into one single subtool. And now with those merged together, I also want to apply a little bit of creasing so I keep these open edges held. So I'm going to go to the geometry area here and go to the crease area. I'm going to click crease. This is going to look at any 45 degree angles on my model or any open surfaces like the edges of the cylinders here. And it's going to crease them. So I turn crease on. And you'll see after the crease is applied, there'll be a faint double line that's appearing at those creased areas. Now with this topology creased, if I say use something like dynamic subdivision or start dividing this model up, you'll see that those edges are going to hold. So they're going to stay held to that area. So this is going to come in handy later if you want to preview what your model looks like in smooth or unsmooth modes. So now that I have this part created, I'm going to get out of polyframes here. I'm going to go back up to my tool palette, go to the subtool area. I'm just going to turn off the plain 3D objects. So I just have these two quarter circles visible. I now want to position these on my screen so they're facing the camera. So just rotating and holding shift to lock it into a front view. I also want to make sure perspective is turned off. Now with these parts visible on my canvas, and I want to take these and turn them into an insert mesh brush. So I'm going to go to the brush palette over here and open this up. In here, I'm going to go to the create area, and I'm going to click create insert mesh. This is going to take the subtool I've selected here, and it's going to create a new insert mesh brush. So I'm going to click this. You'll see it's going to give me a little dialog here. I'm going to click new here because I don't want to append it to an existing insert mesh brush. And now you'll see at the top, the IMM viewer bar is going to pop up, and I now have an insert mesh brush created from that part. Now, after I have an insert mesh brush created from that part, I now need to turn this insert mesh brush into a nano mesh brush. So to do this, I'm gonna go to the brush palette up here. I'm gonna go to the create menu again, and now I'm gonna click create nano mesh brush. This is gonna take my current insert mesh brush and turn it into a nano mesh brush. So clicking create nano mesh brush here will now give me a new brush. This brush is going to be a Z modeler brush. So you'll see the icon has changed to Z modeler. However, it now contains this as a nano mesh part. So now that I have a Z modeler brush with this nano mesh part inside of it, I can now go back to my plain 3D object I originally modified. So I'm gonna go back to the tool palette over here and then I click that plain 3D object and turn on my polyframes and I now should have something like this. Now, if your plain object here is not a poly mesh, you wanna make sure it is a poly mesh, just go to the tool palette here and click make poly mesh. And now if you hover over any of the polys on this model here with that Z modeler brush selected with that nano mesh part, you'll see if I hover over a poly, it's going to say insert nano mesh of poly. So I wanna apply this nano mesh across all the polys on this model. And I'm gonna use the nano mesh functionality with this. So I'm gonna hover over one of these. I'm gonna press space bar to go in the Z modeler poly action menu. In here, I want to change my target from a single poly to all polygons. And then I want to come across one of the polygons here and click and drag. And this is now going to draw out that insert mesh part. 
So you can see my rings are now being drawn out across all the polygons on the plane there. So now that I have the nano mesh applied to my plane, I can now manipulate this by going to the tool palette over here. Then I can go to the nano mesh area. In here, there's a few things I want to make sure are reset back to default. So I want to first make sure that the width, length, and height are all set to one. I also want to make sure that all the rotation values here are set to zero. Then I want to come up here to this option next to proportion, fit, and fill. I want to set this to fill. And then I want to set my size to one. So what this has done, it's gone through and it's taken that nano mesh part that I drew out all across all polygons. It is now going to fill that part to fit the polygon itself. And since all these options here are zeroed out, it should be making this nice tileable surface. So every single one of these should be looking like they're connecting. And you'll see I'm gonna start getting that truche type pattern. So now what you can do is you can come through and start rotating these different parts here, and this will change how that pattern is going to look. So we can do that same process inside of ZBrush using another Z modeler function. So if I hover over one of these polys here and press spacebar to go back into the Z modeler poly action menu, I wanna locate the spin edges action. So I'm gonna come over here and click spin edges. I wanna make sure my target is a single poly and we're just gonna leave it clockwise for now. Now with this action selected, if I come across a poly, it's going to spin these edges. And when it spins the edges, it's going to change how this nano mesh is being applied to that polygon. So if I come across this poly here and click, you'll see it's going to spin the edges, which is going to rotate that nano mesh that's applied to that poly, and now I'm getting this result. So this is the same functionality that you get if you would have created this pattern and then place it on a grid and then rotated each of the tiles. So now I can come through and just start spinning edges all over the place and start modifying my truche pattern here. So this is really cool to come through and start playing with the shapes and forms of this. Now you don't have to worry about spinning the borders any differently than any of the others since this pattern is designed in a way where they're always going to line up. So no matter what you do to a corner, so these corners look like they're going to be different, since the middle points of these polys here contain those quarter circles and they're always going to link together correctly, you can just come through and modify this in any way possible and it's not going to distort that tiling surface. So now I've gone through and created this nice pattern here. Now after we have this created, now let's say I want to generate an alpha from this. So I want to take this and create an alpha map that I can then apply through surface noise or something else inside of ZBrush to get this on my meshes. So to do this, we just need to make sure we have that subtool selected. And then we just need to go to the alpha menu up here and open this up. And then in here, we just need to click this from mesh button. This is going to take what we currently see on our subtool here, and it's going to now create an alpha from the mesh. So if I click from mesh here, I'm now going to get this. Now, once this is opened, you wanna make sure you frame this really quick by coming up the top of the Transform Alpha 3D option here and just click Frame. This is gonna make sure that the mesh is now framed correctly to the borders. You can set your map size down here. So let's say I want this to be 1024. And then now we can click OK. And this is now going to generate a new alpha from the mesh. And this alpha will now be tileable and it will also be set to that corresponding width and height. So that process one more time to capture that alpha is just taking the subtool with that nano mesh applied and come through and spin these edges to modify this a little bit more. After I'm happy with the result I'm seeing, I just need to go to the alpha palette up here. I just need to click the from mesh option here, which is going to take the subtool I've selected and create an alpha from the mesh of that subtool. Just wanna click frame to make sure it's framed nice and evenly there. Set my map size, click okay and now I have that alpha created. After this alpha is created, I can now export this out and use it in an external application or use it with surface noise inside of ZBrush. So that is a quick rundown on how you can create a truche quarter circle tile pattern inside of ZBrush using a insert mesh part that is then converted to a nano mesh brush, which is then is applied as a nano mesh to a grid and then you can come through and use the Z Modeler Spin Edges action here to manipulate this and change how that pattern is going to look. And then you can capture that pattern using the Alpha From Mesh. 
and then generate alphas through ZBrush that way. So if you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.